Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Plan and Execute the Perfect Tour. The webinar presentation will be 30 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. Brought to you by Senior Living Smart, this is the first in a series of 30-minute webinars to help the senior living professional gain information and insight. And without further ado, I would now like to introduce our presenter, Debbie Howard, CEO of Senior Living Smart. Debbie has a remarkable background in senior living sales and marketing. She's been successful as a community sales director and regional sales director, divisional vice president, and also national vice president. She has worked for startups, turnarounds, regional and national providers. Always learning, always creative, and always looking to improve the experience of aging for residents in senior living community. So, here's Debbie. Thanks for the introduction, Andrea, and welcome, everybody. We have a lot to cover in a really short time, so get out your pens, get ready to take notes, um, <clears throat> and we will get started with a quick poll. So here's the poll question. Um, what is your biggest barrier in kind of creating red carpet tours? Polls are closing. Okay, so here are the results. Um, it's kind of a tie between just not doing enough discovery. So um, when you're trying to create that special moment or making it memorable, there's just, you don't have the information. Um, team engagement is also an issue and a lack of planning is just right behind that. So not too much issue around first impressions or model apartments. Um, so that's good because I think the, the rest of it is definitely things that we can improve right here on today's webinar. So here are our goals today. Um, we're going to be talking about um, kind of great discovery questions, how to dig deeper than just the basics. Um, to get a little bit more um, personal so you, we can really customize the, the visit, how to plan the experience, uh, getting the team on board, um, really creating that culture, um, rolling out the red carpet, doing things above and beyond what anybody else in the industry is doing, um, getting an advance, um, an, a next step that's time activated and mutually agreed on before they leave, and then we'll go through some uh, tools and resources that we found that um, can really help you be even more successful. So Andrea, uh, you recently had a tour experience with, um, with your own mom. And um, since that happened pretty recently, uh, I'd love to kind of hear about what worked and what didn't work um, for you. Sure. Uh, and this is an actual true story. I am not making this up. Um, here's my mom, Florence. She's uh, 86 years old, very tough and full of life. She currently lives independently in an apartment building in the same town that she has lived in for the past 70 years. She does have macular degeneration and is legally blind, but that does, doesn't stop her at all. So for those of you not living in New England last winter, you missed quite the event, over 100 inches of snow. It took a natural disaster to stop my mom in her tracks. She couldn't take the cab to the market, couldn't pick up her medications, and worst of all, she couldn't be with her friends. She was isolated, lonely, and frustrated. And as the snow slowly melted, she mentioned that she probably couldn't take another winter like that living alone. And she said she would be interested in touring the new independent assisted living that opened up in her town. Well, I was thrilled. I had been trying to get her to tour any assisted living for a while but it had to be her idea and she had to be ready. So I called and set up the appointment for a tour. And as soon as I pulled into the parking lot, my feelings of excitement and relief started melting along with the winter snows. I know there's a lot of tire kickers in senior living, but we can never forget this is a huge decision involving many emotions and preconceived notions of what senior living is all about. But I knew as soon as I pulled into that community that they didn't understand what a big deal it was for my mom to even agree to come in for a tour. So first of all, we had trouble finding the entrance. There were two kind of quasi entrances and we didn't know which one was the main one. And when we made a decision about which one we were gonna go into, we couldn't find a parking spot. What would have been great is if we were told where to park and park, I'm from Boston Park, <laughs> and if a, and there was a spot available. Nobody greeted us. I had to walk down a hallway 
and poke my head into an administrative office to get some help. It would have been great if we were greeted and welcomed. We were brought to the country kitchen to wait for the sales director, who was about 10 minutes late, and they offered us coffee in a styrofoam cup. Yum. <laughs> so first of all, my mom, who's lived in this town for 70 years, was kind of embarrassed, and she didn't want a lot of people knowing her business or a lot of people seeing her. So sitting in the country kitchen, she felt very uncomfortable. It would have been great to bring her to a comfortable private space and be offered some nice refreshments. When the sales director arrived, she addressed me, not my mom. Big mistake. She should have been addressing and focusing on my mom. My mom is very social and loves to talk. She didn't try to learn about my mom in the current situation. It would have been great if the sales director had gotten information over the phone from me or my mom about the situation prior to the tour. My mom would have talked her ear off. The sales director went right into talking about the building, mentioning it was the old community hospital that was just renovated. And she made a comment about my mom probably having her children there. Well, my mom didn't have children, we're adopted. So <laughs> that did not sit well with my mom. It made her feel kind of uncomfortable. But being the social person my mom is, she wanted to fix the conversation. So she said, well, uh, I didn't have my children here, but I spent many days with my son in the emergency room. Now that would have been another entree into learning more about my mom's family, her history, and just talking about my mom. Uh, but she went right into um, talking about the building and the hospital and the renovations. She could have developed rapport and continued to learn about my mom. She showed us every available apartment. My mom was exhausted. Uh, and we couldn't keep track of which apartments we were seeing and which had the views. And it was, it was very overwhelming. What she should have done is talk about my mom's current living situation and learn what was important for her in an apartment. She was invited to the open house, and um, I don't live in the town. I live about two hours away, and we kept saying, you know, my mom is legally blind, and she doesn't drive and has no way of getting to the open house. What would have been great is if they invited her to, an open, to the open house and arranged to have her picked up along with a bunch of her friends. A night out for free food. Man, they could have packed that car. <laughs> So there was no follow-up, no financial discussion, and right now my mom won't even talk about independent or assisted living. She feels like she's giving up so much, including what makes her, her. So we walked outside of the community, and she turned to me and said, this isn't for me, and that was crushing. What I would have loved to hear is this could be okay. Not, woohoo, pack my bags, I'm moving in. <laughs> But it would have been great if she had turned to me and say, you know what, this could be okay. So had the tour gone well, this community would have gotten to know my mom. And they would have valued her and realized that had she moved in, she'd probably be the best salesperson for the community. It wasn't a bad tour. Honestly, it was, an, it was nice enough. You know, the sales director was very pleasant. We met residents and staff. It's a beautiful building. But my mom just couldn't picture herself there. So sit back, keep an open mind, as Debbie talks about some ways to make a magical tour experience, an experience where the potential resident feels that this could be okay, where someone knows that my mom is Italian, a dancer, a cook, a hostess, and an entertainer, very social, but also not happy about being alone, and a little scared, and a little frustrated. Thanks, Andrea, for sharing your story as it represents how most tours are done today. So let's turn now to creative ways to create that wow experience that will improve tour to move in conversions and differentiate you from your competitors. So let's start with a quick survey. How much money do you think it takes to generate a tour? So everybody can get their fingers ready and tell me, do you think it costs less than $200? Do you think it costs about 300 bucks to get somebody through the door? Uh, does 500 sound better, 900, or a whopping 1,500? Um, what do you think the investment is when you think about what it costs to do advertising and website SEO and events and all of the things you do to make that phone ring and then take them from an inquiry to actually a tour? So 
the good news is that it is not $1,500, <laughs> at least I hope not, um, but the average cost uh, to a tour is about $900. On average, it costs about $500 just to get a qualified lead, and it costs about another $400 to convert that lead into a tour. So I bring this to your attention because I think it's really important to think about, you know, what that investment is. And we're going to talk about ways to kind of get a better return on that investment and improve the, the closing ratios. So step number one in um, creating that red carpet tour is discovery. Everything starts with discovery. And I know a lot of you identified that maybe we just don't have enough information. And I think that's a huge issue. Um, in order to create and execute the red carpet tour, we have to just dig deeper than the basics. We have to tap into the information that you need to personalize the community visit. You know, so much of what I hear on mystery shops, um, you know, sounds more like an interrogation or like a checklist and really less like a conversation. You know, it sounds like, um, you know, name, address, phone, zip. How would you hear about this? Who are you inquiring for? Where do they live? How old are they? What are their diagnoses, their medications? Who are the decision makers? What's your budget? Followed by a laundry list of features and benefits. And then are you ready to schedule a tour? And while it sounds like that's all stuff that we need to, com to use to complete our inquiry form or to input into our CRM, that's really not what it's about. And the other thing to keep in mind is that people might make some decisions intellectually, but they buy emotionally. So we have to dig deeper and really get into the core um, motivators. So imagine if you had that same kind of discovery process, that basic checklist um, in a different situation. Imagine that you are in a social situation where somebody new had moved into the neighborhood and you were introduced. So, Andrea, I understand you moved, just moved into the neighborhood. Yeah, down the street. Great, great party, huh? Yeah, great. Are you married? Uh, yeah. Did you have kids? Uh, yes. How old? Uh, 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 well, five, seven, and 12. Okay, how about hobbies and interests? Uh, yeah, I, yep, yeah, uh-huh. Well, I feel like I really know you. Would you like to come over for dinner? Absolutely, Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of sounds weird. Um, so to create a red carpet tour, we've got to change our discovery techniques. Remember that the prospect, in, they're the ones who called. They initiated the engagement with you. They call for a reason. They have questions. They have needs and wants and hopes and concerns. And they have a story to tell. And our job is just to let them tell it. So typically, uh, the call will start you know, with my phone ringing if I'm the sales uh, director and, you know, an opener like, hey, uh, hi, I'm calling to get some information. Uh, great. That's what I'm here for. Um, can you tell me, are you looking for yourself or for someone else? Uh, I'm looking for my mom. Terrific. Tell me about your mom. Oh, um, well, uh, she's living on her own, very active, social. Uh, she does have macular degeneration. It's hard for her to get around. Um, but, you know, she manages OK on her own. OK, so then I would get into situational questions. So instead of starting with a laundry list of diagnoses and medications and what's wrong and, and how old they are and all of that, it's about starting with who they are and starting with situational questions about today, the reality of where where is Florence living today? What's working for her? What's not working for her? What's not working for Andrea as a daughter who lives two hours away? Um, and really, why? Why today? What's different today than last week? Um, and once I got kind of the situational understanding of, you know, favorite routines and what a typical day looks like, what a great day looks like for Florence, and then what maybe a lonely, isolating day looks like for Florence, and I really understand her situation, I can then move into questions about motivators. Um, you know, why make a change? You know, why is it not working now? And understanding the specific wants and needs. And also, what do they hope will be different in a community setting? Um, and what, what's, what should be better? Um, and also, what are their concerns? What are they afraid of? What are the fears about making the transition? Once I understand the motivators, I can go into the identity, understanding life stories, backgrounds, careers, children, interests, hobbies, um, and really what their identity is. And I should get from that that Florence is Italian, a dancer, a great cook, a hostess with a mostess, and, but she's also a little scared and, and isolated um, you know, at the end of that conversation. So you can actually download, there's a handout um, that we've um, uploaded and you can click on 
uh, handouts under the control panel and you can download an inquiry form that will guide you through the discovery process and give you some sample questions that might be helpful. So then when you get to scheduling the tour, you got you did all your great discovery and now you're ready to schedule the tour. You have to set up um, the understanding of how long it will take and kind of what to expect. So I always tell people, um, you know, it's going to take probably 45 minutes to an hour to for us to really have a wonderful visit and to show you what would be most helpful. If you don't tell people how long it takes and they come dashing in between soccer games and say, I have 10 minutes, show me everything, you are never going to be able to execute that red carpet experience. Um, if you want to invite them for a meal, which I think is, is a wonderful idea because breaking bread with people allows you to have a more intimate conversation, um, I would say tell them to allow an hour and a half or two hours. Um, and also ask them what do they want to learn on the tour. The tour is for them. The tour is not for us. Too often we think, oh great, this is our chance to march them around and show them everything in the community and really wow them. But the reality is they're there for to meet their needs to see if this is a good fit for them. So to be able to say, you know, what do you hope to get out of our time together uh, will sound entirely different than uh, setting up a tour at any other community. Also plan in advance. Part of your planning on the tour, you should be thinking about at the end of this tour, what do I want to have happen next? Um, in advance, a lot of people, when, um, when we ask the question, what do you hope to get out of this um, webinar, they said, I want to learn how to close better. I would recommend substituting the word advancing rather than closing. Um, there aren't that many people that on a very first tour are going to come in and you know automatically make that decision. It's a big decision. It's emotional. It's expensive. So if we can think instead, I mean, it's great when they want to leave a deposit. If you only have a few apartments open, you can often drive to a deposit. Um, but think about what advances um, you could have. And it depends on the situation. So if you have somebody in rehab, then the, the best next step might be to go and do an assessment with the nurse. But if it's someone at home like Florence, maybe it would be to drop off a favorite meal and visit with her where she's comfortable and you can get to see where, where she lives, how she lives, um, or bring her back to an event. Um, so always have a primary, you know, in an ideal world, I want to get the assessment or I want to get the deposit. But if they're not ready for that, have a secondary backup to say, I can understand that, you know, Florence might not want us to come by her apartment just yet. She doesn't know us that well, uh, but we'd love to have her come back. We're having this great event and she can bring all of her friends. Um, but you do want to, you're not going to get in advance unless you've planned in advance and, and have brought that into the conversation. <clears throat> okay, now it's time to plan the tour. Um, great tours don't just happen, and you cannot wing it. You've got to take time to plan. The best strategy involves the executive director and management team. We talked about that team engagement is really an issue. Well, part of that starts with, are we engaging our teams to help us plan the tour? Or is this something that we're doing you know, in isolation and then telling them, you know, you, I, you need to meet them and you need to come to the model apartment and I need you at this time. Um, you're going to get a different level of engagement than um, to say, you know, before we and stand up, you know, I have a tour tomorrow. I'd like for us to work together to really plan a wonderful visit. And I want to tell you about Florence because when I tell you about her, you're going to all want to meet her. Um, so use all the information discovered in, in, in the discovery plan um, to get that memorable experience on paper. So if I was using this um, tool to plan Florence's visit, I would say her top three needs are transportation, um, safety and security, and a social and active lifestyle. And I would say in the wants column, I would put that our top wants are to remain as independent as possible, to still have the ability to cook and entertain, um, to stay engaged with her outside groups. Um, and in the planning section, the personalized tour notes, I would write this. I'm gonna stop by the Italian bakery in town and pick up the best Italian cookies and pastries I can find. I'm also gonna take time to stop by the senior center to get a schedule and a newsletter. And I'm going to go by her church to pick up information because I know that that's important for her. Um, if I can find a picture of, of the Seaside Tappers in action, I will go ahead and print that out and put it in the frame. Um, and I will take our calendar and highlight the activities, just the activities that Florence will like. Um, and I, the reason I'm going to do that is later I'm going to use all of that to personalize the model apartment. So when Florence walks in, it reflects her life and who she is and what's important to her. 
Um, I also know that a major fear or concern for Florence is that we're not going to be able to get her to all of her outside activities, and she doesn't want to give those up. So I would strategize with the team about how to best meet her transportation needs. Perhaps we can get her cab vouchers. Perhaps we can have an account um, where we can uh, kind of pull down her cab money and make sure she gets to where she wants to go. Or maybe we can talk to the driver and the activity director to make sure we can get her to the senior center and church as often as possible. Um, I would plan introductions to the dining director to talk recipes and to the activity director to talk about socialization and transportation. And I would in advance know that the apartment I'm going to show Florence is one with a full kitchen, if I have it, um, and one that's large enough for her to entertain. If I don't have a full kitchen, I would show her the country kitchen and a private dining room to host her parties. Communication. We want to get the team engaged. Well, we have to let them know what's going on. Um, so we have uh, created a forum for the concierge to know who's coming in, what time, what they need. Um, and also we have another one to go by the time clock to let the line staff know that we're rolling out the red carpet. And we're going to tell them, you know, three fun facts that they can use to engage when they meet Florence on the tour. Um, so often we only tell the managers about the scheduled tours um, and not the concierge or the line staff. I find most associates want to be friendly and interact with tours, but they don't feel comfortable with a 30 second commercial because it just is too formal and stiff. But if I tell them three fun facts about the prospect and put it by the time clock, um, it gives them a way to engage and say something like, I hear that you're a great cook. Maybe you can bring some of those recipes here. And then when your team does a great job, reinforce that and recognize them and reward them so you can continue to create that culture. Um, so uh, we've created a reward and recognition ticket where the top part um, is immediately after the tour given to that um, associate who did a great job and explained to them what they did that made a difference. Um, and the bottom part is entered into a tourific drawing. So you can have baskets or gift cards or free lunch tickets or whatever is fun and, and motivating. Um, that really reinforces the culture that you're trying to create. Um, we found these great uh, signs, reserved parking signs. So welcome your prospects by name with a custom valet sign that you can roll out in advance to either save a parking spot by the door or you can have it right in front of the building and then have uh, somebody move the car if that's uh, better for you. Um, but having a parking spot literally with their name on it, so when they come in, they know they're expected, they feel like a celebrity, um, is just a wow red carpet um, strategy. No circling the parking lots, looking for a spot, and this will absolutely be memorable. The other thing that takes a, a tour from ho-hum to wow is to meet the tour at the car. Um, tours, a red carpet tour starts at the car. Um, it's scary to cross the threshold into that building for the first time. But if you can greet them at the car and you're ready to help you know, get folks in and out, have an umbrella handy in case it's raining and walking them in, you know, they feel much better about that experience. And if there's something funky going on in the lobby, they're really not paying attention to it because they're already kind of in conversation. Um, we also have found a, a great sign to go on the concierge desk to once again welcome that family by name. So they know they're expected and they know that they're welcome. Um, there needs to be a private space to visit with families, and the space should be warm and comfortable, inviting for a conversation. Ideally, in a perfect world, it's a dedicated space such as a hospitality suite. But if you don't have that option, you can set up an empty apartment with just comfortable seating and lighting and refreshments. Or you can find a common area that's not you know, used a lot by the residents, such as a library or a private dining room. But never, ever, ever meet in an office. That just makes it a business conversation, and that's not where we want to go. So what do you have in the hospitality suite? Well, you have great refreshments, not, you know, store-bought <laughs> cookies, but something that's been fresh baked and that really represents your, your dining program. If you know the favorites of who's touring, make sure that those are in there. You know, for my mom, you have to have tea. She's not a coffee drinker, and she will be insulted if there's not tea available. Um, Please never use plastic paper or styrofoam to entertain guests. You wouldn't do that in your own home. Um, so, you know, make sure you have some china and glasses. 
um, that can really reflect your community well. Um, I always have a Keurig coffee and tea maker in, in my hospitality rooms with real cream, <laughs> not powdered. Um, name brand sodas, no one wants Shasta, um, and just everything that you need. And I do like for the, for the tours to start in the hospitality suite to kind of visit and get comfortable. Um, and then kind of the, the second part of the tour is the walking part and only show them the parts of the community that match their wants and needs and goals. And you know what? No one cares about the mailboxes or, you know, the activity board. They expect there's transportation and a place to get their hair done. So really focus on the things that are going to connect with the life story of that prospect. And then when the tour is done, come back to the hospitality room um, so that you can set a date and time for an advance. Now that they've had the tour, get their feedback and help them plan that next step. An advance is date and time activated. So, you know, something like I'll give you a call in two weeks. Not no an advance. advance. <laughs> not that doesn't work. Um, but I will visit your mom at the rehab tomorrow at 10 a.m. with our nurse, Laura. That's an advance. Um, also, in the hospitality suite, have all your uh, all your content ready to go. So uh, model apartment. OK, this has got to be wow. This is where people begin to picture themselves actually living there. So please don't use leftover furniture. It's worth investing in a beautiful model apartment. Um, it's got to be warm and inviting. We recommend um, you using Model 55 for a, a turnkey designer solution. Um, they are just the best of the best and they'll get you all set up. Make sure that all five senses are uh, involved in your model apartment. It has to look, smell, sound, and feel great. So before the tour, check to make sure the lights are on, make sure there's music playing, that you have a scented spray or plug-ins, and that you have refreshments available. Um, this is a place you want to linger. So even if you've had refresh refreshments in the hospitality room, make sure there's a place to kind of visit um, in the model apartment. Take the time to personalize the apartment for each tour so that when they go in, this reflects their life and their identity. And really plan to linger here. Um, if you don't have a, a professional model apartment or you can't afford one, you know, just find a couple of residents who love showing off their um, their apartments. OK, so putting it all together. So if we put together all of the planning and all of the thought and we use all of the tools that we just um, we just went through, um, how would the tour be different for your mom? Would you like to find out? I would. OK, so imagine this. You're with your mom. She's probably a little reluctant, and a little bit scared, mm -hmm. but you pull into the community and you spot a sign with your mom's name on it and a reserved parking spot. Does that say wow? That says wow. That says wow. Um, and when you come into the community, the, the salesperson meets you at the car and introduces themselves. They walk with you into the community. And by that time, your mom's already talking them up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you spot out of the corner of your eye that there's another sign um, at the front desk with your mom's name on it. A really nice personal touch. The concierge comes out from behind her desk and greets you both, takes coats, and shows you both into the hospitality suite where you're offered coffee and tea or cold beverages, um, served in china cups, and ah, the best Italian pastries in town. Oh, that would have been great. That would have been great. The sales first person focuses on Florence and learns about her life. Um, and the visit just makes everyone feel comfortable. As you walk through the community, staff members welcome Florence and mention something about her. One says, I hear you're a great cook. Another reinforces her love of dancing. Florence is a celebrity. <laughs> and she would love that. She would love that. The salesperson introduces her to the dining services director, and they chat about Italian recipes. Hers are always better than his. <laughs> <laughs> the activity director meets everyone in the model apartment to sit at the round table and review the calendar and discuss transportation options that will allow Florence to participate in all of her favorite Winthrop activities. They sit at the round table. The apartment reflects Florence's interests. There's a bulletin board, and it has the church newsletter, the senior, cen senior center calendar, the community newsletter, um, and the uh, activity calendar that's highlighted just with the things that would be of interest to Florence. They linger, have a cup of coffee, or grab a cold water from the refrigerator. Before they leave, they go back to the hospitality suite to see if there are any questions. 
the executive director comes in to meet Florence and she invites her back to an upcoming event and lets her know that they will arrange transportation. Florence agrees and asks if she can bring some friends. That's how she rolls. <laughs> Before she leaves, the salesperson gives her a tin of Italian cookies to bring home and walks her to the car. Now that is a red carpet tour. And I think my mother would have walked out of the building going, you know, this might be okay. And that's about as good as it gets. So uh, we put together uh, some resources um, that we found that will help you be even more successful. Um, we've created a red carpet tour package that includes all the signage, all of the planning forms, the communication and reward and recognition tools. Um, for Senior Living Smart members, you will find these on our smart marketing platform. Um, we also recommend Model 55 for gorgeous turnkey model apartment furniture packages. And if you're looking for a great post tour gift that you can customize with a handwritten note, Order a supply of Nostalgic America coffee table books featuring beautiful photos of movie stars, sports heroes, entertainers, and historical events that are perfect for the generation we serve. For Florence, I would take her to the page of famous dancers. Great. Thanks, Debbie. We're now going to begin answering the questions submitted during today's presentation. So feel free if you haven't already submitted your question. As a reminder, you can submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. So one of the questions is, where can I find these forms? Yep, so you can find them um, on Smart Marketing um, if you're a Senior Living Smart member. And if you're not a Senior Living Smart member, just um, sign up <laughs> and you'll be able to access all of the tools. And it's really it's really inexpensive too. I think that that's really important. Is that the the sign is like the the two signs and all the tools is like under three hundred and seventy five dollars. So it's a nice uh, it's definitely a worthwhile investment. Considering you're you're investing nine hundred hundred dollars on every tour, it'd be great to invest three seventy five for all the tour tools you need. Great. Uh, we have one other question. What changes would you make for a surprise walk in tour to give them the special treatment? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, obviously you don't have the planning time for a surprise, but you can still take that time in the hospitality suite to, um, you know, to find out their life story and to really sit and visit with them and have the concierge go and get some refreshments. Obviously, they can't be as planned. Um, but I think sitting and, and really asking those same life story questions, um, what we you know, what brings you in today, typical day, motivators, what's working, what's not working, and really digging into the identity of that prospect. Um, then when you do the tour, um, at least you're able to grab people um, who are going to be the right folks that, you know, if somebody is, is diabetic, maybe they want to talk to the um, the nurse or the dining services director. So you can still personalize the um, kind of the tour route and what you're showing them. Um, you know, you don't have as much time to obviously plan everything as, as personally, but I still think that the basic process of asking better questions, digging deeper into life story, um, and then relating the tour um, to what's important to them is something that you can do with every tour and you can still walk them out. And, you know, I was fine when I walk somebody out at the end of the tour, I end up with a hug and that's a great way to finish. <laughs> and you can also still have the opportunity to personalize the, the, the next step, the advance with the information you gather. Right. Uh, what if you can't get discovery on the phone? So I guess it depends why you can't get great discovery. Um, sometimes you can't get great discovery because someone's calling from work on their lunch hour and they're like, I only have a minute. <laughs> you know, I, I, I need to. My mom is finally at the place where she allow me to schedule this tour and I just need to get this done. I think if it's that type of thing, it's important to say, you know, we really want to make this visit so special uh, for your mom. When would be a good time that I can call you back um, after work? Um, that that we can that I can understand a little bit more about what's important to her and really what's important to you. Um, you know, I think sometimes if it's just a rush thing, it's better to call back and get that information. Also, if you haven't gotten it, maybe you are, you were having a crazy day and you just didn't have time to get that information. We always want to confirm every tour. We don't want to just set a tour. We don't want to set it and forget it, right? We want to always uh, confirm a hundred percent of those. Um, tours because they might need uh, directions or 
to your point, which entrance or whatever it is. So when we reconfirm the tour, that's a great time to say, you know, I'm so glad you're coming. I just want to confirm um, before uh, we hang up. Would you mind if I just ask you a few questions so I can make this visit special for your mom or dad? I've never had anyone say, nope, not going to tell you anything because I don't want you to make it special. <laughs> Uh, so another question, Deb, what do the Nostalgic America books cost? You know, they uh, they have different price points because they have a soft cover and they have a hard cover. And it kind of depends on the quantity. Um, but if you go on our website and to the partner directory and, and look up Nostalgic America, um, you can actually link to their website where you can uh, you can sort through. You can actually flip through a sample um, and it will give you all of the pricing right there. But I do think at the end of the tour, it's important to have some takeaway, some personalized gift. In a perfect world, it would be something very specific to them. So my recommendation always is, if you can create some uh, some baskets um, or some bags or some tins that have themes, so you might have a dog lover or a cat lover or um, you know a gardener basket or a coffee or tea lover basket. If you can make that 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 takeaway gift really a personal and special, that's great. But sometimes you don't have time. Or to the uh, previous question about walk-in tours, you, you don't know anything about them. It's good to have kind of your backup um, gifts that you can uh, brand. So with Nostalgic America, you can put in there your um, your logo, your sticker, and you can also write a handwritten note. I think it's always good to have that. Great. Um, so Deb, uh, what would you do differently for a memory care tour? So the only thing I would do exactly the same for Discovery because the identity still remains. <laughs> that person, you know, if your mom had dementia, she would still see herself in exactly the same way. The only difference would be that I would do the tour planning with the memory care team and I would get them engaged. So the planning might be, um, could we have an activity going on that we know that Florence would love? So maybe we could have a cooking demonstration or we could have a baking project going on at the time of the tour. So working with your activity director to make sure that even the activities can be somewhat customized. Um, I remember I had uh, I had somebody who said the biggest fear for their dad was there weren't going to be enough men in the community. So the day before I went running around and I knocked on the door of every guy in the community and I said, would you please come down and have coffee in the lobby and read your newspaper there because I have a gentleman I'd love to introduce you to. So when he walked in the door, his biggest fear um, was automatically eliminated because when he walked in, there was a group of eight or 10 guys having a great conversation, having their coffee and reading the paper. So to some degree, you really can stage it. I don't recommend bringing in things that you don't really do. <laughs> you know, Don't bring in a dance troupe for Florence if she's not <laughs> going to get that experience. But if you can move around activities and plan them at a time that relates to that tour and that prospect, you will hit a home run and your tour to move in will be better. Great. Well, thank you, Debbie, and thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. Uh, if you have any other questions, please contact Debbie directly and let us know some best practices and, and your terrific stories. We'd love to hear them. Once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation, and we'd appreciate it if you could complete that and provide your feedback. You will also receive a follow-up email within about 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar and a copy of the presentation. On behalf of Senior Living Smart, Thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of the day. Our next webinar will be on Thursday, March 17th, how to get and use rave reviews to boost occupancy. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.